All right. OK, very good. Um, let the record reflect this Monday, March 29th, 2021. Here to consider our uh, docket for this morning. And our first case is a Division of Industrial Compliance case. Uh, and it's uh, case number 21-0015. Um, and the division's adjudication number is noted on our docket. Let's have an introduction of the parties. Let's begin with the appellant uh, and or in this case, appellant's representative. State your full name, spell your last name in the capacity by which you're here representing uh, the appellant. And we'll do the same thing with the building and fire official. Uh, we'll have an oath administered and we'll get started. Bradley Blumenscheid, B-L-U-M-E-N-S-H-E-I-D. I'm the architect with Rhythm Architecture. Mark Rudaliano, B-I-R-U-T-I-G-L-I-A-N-O. I'm an associate with Rhythm Architecture. Okay, very good. Mr. Eaton? Jeff Eaton, E-A-T-O-N, Chief Building Official for the Division of Industrial Compliance. And our fire official? Captain Mike Makowski, M-A-K-O-W-S-K-I, Fire Inspector for the City of Marion. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. If each of you would stand and raise your right hand, and Nick, would you administer the oath, please? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Okay. Um, the memo that we have um, would indicate that uh, at least presently we have items one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, maybe not five. We'll see where that goes. Um, but that appears to be in play for us this morning. Um, if the memorandum is correct. Um, that being said, Mr. Blumenscheid, uh, you uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much. So if you guys remember last month we presented this and there was some confusion as to how we should present it. Uh, we talked to Mr. Eaton and uh, the plans examiner, Sudhir, and tried to work through how to classify this as an R3 use, which it is, and uh, Mr. Eaton had agreed that it is. Um, so what we've done is uh, gone through and said what we want to adjudicate is to have it reviewed as an R3 because Sudhir still believes it's not an R3. And as such, if it is classified as an R3, we would be appealing items number one. Is that right? Number three. Number two, number four, and that's it. Okay. Four, one, and four. And are these the items from the revised adjudication order or the, the original one? The revised. Okay. I think the original, the revised one, he sent out number four added one item about um, the occupancy based on the gross square footage of the R2 or the R3. Right. Okay. So that one. Let, let, okay. me, let, me, let, let me just uh, defer to Mr. Eaton just to make sure we're all on the same page before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Does that comport with what you think's before us, Mr. Eaton? Yes, sir. We did add item number one uh, based on the the square footage, they would have more than 16 occupants, which would not qualify as an R3. So I also felt it was more conducive to R2, but if they would get a variance limiting the occupant load to 16, then the R3 provisions could go forward with some of the other items as well. Okay, all right. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Blunchak. And, and one more time, if we could go over the what the items that you're appealing again. Well, uh, if we can be R3 and we can take 310.5.5, the multifamily alternative compliance, the group R3 would would switch over to the RCO in place for the requirements, in which case we wouldn't need uh, appeal items 2, 3, 5, and 6, which were the original, because you, you wouldn't need a fire alarm system 
Well, let's ask Mr. Eaton if he agrees with that. Are we going to use the RCO to, to do this so that he doesn't need to appeal those items? Let's turn my email on to you. It's I, the only thing I would think is if you want to memorialize these items based on the approval of first you got to get past the first item so if there's not a comfort level with limiting an occupant load because i know in the past i've always had concerns on how do you control that but if you limit the occupant load to 16 to allow them as an r3 then technically these other items if you jump to the residential code would not be in play but as a condition to item number one I'd be more comfortable adding these as a variance with item number one. You're allowing it to be an R3, so the other items would go away, but I think you'd want to make that part of the record. That's just my thoughts. Right, and we're, we're agreeable to that. There's only 13 bedrooms, and the bedrooms are really single occupancy, so even though the square footage calculation has our occupancy higher, it's really not possible to be above that 13. So if we have that adjudicated as a maximum of 16 occupants, we're more than comfortable with that, at least from our end. Uh, Captain, what, uh, where are you on this? Uh, I'm going to fall, uh, you know, with the board's decision on this. Um, my biggest thing is, uh, you know, want a sprinkler system and early notification for everybody as far as what we call it. Um, I'm going to defer to your expertise on that. Um, OK, this, this has been a confusing uh, <laughs> trip for me. All right. I understand. So Jeff, I have a question. Are you still uh, requiring a, a full alarm system? Yes, yes, I would definitely require that, which would then, well, the, the uh, fire code does require that, which would then uh, be monitored at a uh, central location. Yes, I would as well. Mr. Blumenscheid? Uh, was, I, I don't know who was talking. Is that Captain Mikowski that said that we needed a fire alarm? Uh, both Captain Mikowski and, and Mr. Eaton. Okay. Said that uh, the, well, said that uh, the uh, sprinkler system would have to transmit offsite. Yeah, correct. That our intent is to have the 13G system that notifies uh, the fire department upon flow, not to have a full fire alarm system in the building. Uh, so there's a, a, a difference. Um, what we had agreed to with Captain Mike was having uh, uh, smoke detectors in the bedroom per code, um, common areas near the stairs per code, CO detectors, and have the, um, the 13D system radio the fire department without having to have a full fire alarm system throughout the building. Captain okay. Mike, is that your understanding too? Uh, that's yes, yeah, that's what we discussed, and then I remember we also discussed uh, you know the possibility for everybody's comfort level of, of having a full uh, you know fire alarm system at some point too. Uh, I know the egress and the the uh, part of the egress issues uh, for the rooms themselves that are underground uh, that might help with uh, you know the comfort level there. But this is a very unique building so again i'm i'm learning on this one uh you know from the board as well so you have room, sleeping rooms that are below grade yeah and they're the ones above grade don't have any windows yeah yeah it's the the way the building is constructed it's a kind of a split level you walk in at grade and then it splits half a level down half a level up um, it used to be an old office that they've converted into this bedroom configuration. <clears throat> and the way that the original design was, was for an office, but it be residential. So that's why we started having conversations with Captain Mikowski to 
figure out what would be agreeable to him, which is how we landed on the 13D system and no fire alarm. Well, yeah. it doesn't sound like Captain Mikowski saying no fire alarm. Well, he has told us no fire alarm many times in the past, so I'm honestly a little surprised right now that he's wanting that. So, and, and I think our and I think our discussion last time we I think had said you know the we were not going to be willing to let this turn into a single family residence because it is a commercial building and there are a lot of people in there and we don't want to address it as such and that we were would consider a variance for this with a full fire alarm system um i don't know if you recall that uh conversation that we had last time we were before us well it's it's a boarding house non-transients um so i guess which would be more useful to have would a sprinkler system or a fire alarm system be both about to go both Mr. Chair, if I could weigh in on that item five. Please. We had another project. It's totally unrelated to this uh, different occupancy, but the question on the egress windows came up and it's something that our agency hadn't looked at uh, the way they had. And I think there's even additional language in the upcoming version of ICC, but long story short and again this is different than how we've always reviewed this section in 10 of 6.3 egress windows if it's not a single exit building the egress windows would not be required on the lower three stories if the building suppressed throughout so if this is not a single exit building so the basement if there's two means of egress and the building sprinkled throughout the egress windows technically aren't required. So that being said, if the 13D system is not considered sprinklered throughout, then I would lean towards the fire alarm as an alternative to that. If it was fully suppressed throughout. You just, uh, we just lost you, Jeff, uh, your audio. Jeff just froze. Let's give him a second. He's probably, I don't know, he's probably gonna have to reconnect. His dial up froze. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll go off the record for just a second. Okay. I'm going to step away for one sec. I'll be Oh, Jeff. Yes. Did you notice we cannot put anyone in the live event for all to see? It's not working. We can't put in. What do you mean I up in the? Yeah, send live. It's not working. It just keeps saying loading preview. Just really? so you're aware. Yeah, I tried to put individuals up there and unable to. Can't send them live. I'll try again. Yeah. Just so you're aware. I sent it to IT. Maybe the state didn't pay their bill. I, I can, though. I'm not seeing it. I see it on your desktop and then it, it sat there for a while, but it never. So I tried to send it live and it says loading preview on my end. 
I, I just put Brad up there. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, let's put Chip up there. I'm not seeing that at all on my screen. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, I would have to look on online to see. Let me check that to see if it's. Uh, that's going. And we're waiting on Jeff to come back. Right. Okay. My email's locked up. Any Jeff uh, sightings? Not yet. Jeff is calling me in. Well, I see we still have Captain Mikowski on. Mr. Blumenscheid, you still on? Yes, I'm still on. OK, thank you. I'm working with Jeff. Just a moment, please. OK. My apologies, I'm back apparently. Okay, um, are, are you back by phone now? Uh, no, my laptop, I don't know what happened. Everything went completely dead. <laughs> then I didn't have the join prompt to click back on. All right, let's, uh, let's go back on the record, Nick. We are on record. Okay, 
Um, we, uh, for purposes of the record, we did recess because Mr. Eaton uh, had some technical challenges uh, and he is back on. Um, Jeff, you were, uh, you sort of had the floor uh, and you were telling us about uh, item five and some other issues. Um, let me ask Nick real quick. What, what was the last sentence or two did you catch? Um, I don't know. I don't remember. I can't go back. Okay. I can I can give you the cliff notes version quickly. OK, go ahead. Uh, the item five was on the egress windows and we had another project similar to this. Long story short, the egress window requirements are intended mainly for single exit buildings. So if the building has two means of egress and is fully suppressed, the egress windows would not be required up to three floors. So the question on the 13D system and the fire alarm, if 13D is not considered fully suppressed throughout, then I have a better comfort level having fire alarm and detection throughout uh, in lieu of the egress windows. OK, uh, look, questions, questions of Mr. Eaton by members of the board at this point in time, and then I'm going to go back to Mr. Blumenscheid. Jeff, this is Neil. You would still require the 13D system, though, correct? Along with the alarm. Yes, sir. Thanks. OK, Mr. Blumenscheid, comments? A uh, quick question to Mr. Eaton. So I I don't know that section of the code where it gives that exception for the emergency escape up to three floors. Um, do you happen to know that one offhand? Because that's that's a new Mr. one to me. I'm going to just just for purposes of the record, that's a question uh, addressed to me uh, that you can answer, Mr. Eaton. I, I Mr. Bloomshine, I can't allow you to question him because that'd be the unauthorized practice of the law. But you've asked. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Mr. Eaton. Yeah, Mr. Chair, it's 1006. There's two tables uh, for the egress windows. Uh, that's footnote A in both the tables uh, that are listed in our adjudication order, those two code sections. Mr. Blumenscheid, uh, any other questions? that uh, I could direct Mr. Eaton? Oh, uh, no, I think so. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page that we want to adjudicate it as an R3 use. Um, you are requested to still have a 13B system plus five eleven system, which would take us to alternative compliance in the residential code, which would eliminate the, all the other items on the correction letter is that correct i do not think that is i do not think that is correct mr Ruth. i don't think we are going to get rid of the other items on the adjudication order by calling this a single family residential house i think we're going to keep the building as it is and grant a variance on it based on some conditions okay uh so maybe right so, what, what, so in other words mr Blumenshaw, i think what mr began is saying is we get that far we, we still have to address items two, three, four, six, and seven. They, they don't. They don't just. They're not. It, 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 if if you overcome those challenges, it would be what by way of a variance, uh, perhaps with conditions imposed, as opposed to uh, those just simply uh, evaporating. I think that's what Mr. Began is saying. Yes. So I guess our first issue is whether or not this is actually going to follow the calculated occupancy of 22 persons or not. Correct, Paul? I, I think so. And, you know, I, I don't mind, again, the only reason to say, hey, and, and, and again, maybe Mr. Eaton needs to, to chime in. The only reason to do that is to get it so that we can call it an R3. And I'm OK with that, calling it an R3. I, what I'm not OK is then saying, OK, well, it's an R3, so let's call it a single family house. This is clearly not a single family house. Well, and 
I guess not that we're a board of precedent, but you know, I, I'm not in favor of artificially limiting occupancy because th that's just that's just a fiction that that's not going to happen. Um, I, I just you've got office space, you've got people that are going to be coming in and out and yeah. You know, while these may be intended as one person sleeping rooms, what's to say somebody's not going to invite a guest over? So I, I don't think artificially limiting the occupancy or the headcount is I, I'm not in favor of that. So in, in Chip, let me ask you then, do you think it's better to say, OK, instead of as a means to getting to call it an R3 via occupancy is that we would grant a variance on the occupancy and and call it an R, R3 so that they can use the 13D system? Mr. Chair, if I could clarify my last statement. Good, yes, please. I, I just looked back in the code actually. Uh, Section 1030 is the egress window requirement, which takes you back to the tables in 1006 that I mentioned. But the language in 1030 R2 is the only occupancy that uses those tables. Uh, actually, the language in the code says egress windows required by this chapter in group R2 in accordance with tables 1006. 321 and 106322 and group R3 shall have egress windows below the fourth floor. So if this is R3, egress windows are required no matter what. The exception that I mentioned for single exit is only for R2. So in this case, that item five is in play no matter what. So my apologies. I okay. Is that a bit? Well, I guess to answer your question, Paul, my, my, if it quacks like an R2 and walks like an R2, then leave it an R2 and then deviate from there. Well, let me let me then go back and ask Mr. Eaton and, and Captain Mikowski if the 13D system is adequate for them to support a variance. I really don't have an objection um, as long as I you know have a sprinkler system there. I that's my biggest goal. This is tell me. Go ahead. We had people talk. Sorry. Go ahead, Chip. Uh, Paul, if, if you think I'm all wet, I mean, I'm only one member of the board. I mean, say no. no, no I, 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 uh, uh, it doesn't matter to me as far as the nomenclature if it's an R3 or or an R2. Um, you know, clearly we got all of these items um that would need a variance in in either case <laughs> so an r3 or r2 it doesn't make a, a a big difference to me i think mr blumenthal wanted it to be an r3 uh so that he could use the residential code which i am not not for um yeah, especially since that might actually be a violation of zoning um, in some way, shape, or form, uh, of which he, there would be other problems. And this, it was a commercial building, and it's changed the use from a commercial building. Uh, you know, I, I, my guess is probably an R2 would fit in that, but a single family residential would not. Um, that's beside the case. So R3, R2, uh, you know, I would be open to a suggestion from Mr. Eaton which way you'd want to proceed on that. I think it makes sense as 
Mr. Walsh stated, leave it R2 and then grant the relief if the board seems fit on the other items. It's kind of the same end result. It's just right. we're not worrying about the document load. Okay, I, I, I think I'm okay with that. Let's, uh, before we get again ahead of ourselves, uh, Neil, Brad, uh, thoughts on leaving it at R2 and then whatever band-aids need to be applied, band-aids are applied? Yeah, this is Neil. I'm more comfortable with leaving it in R2 and then moving yeah. forward. <laughs> I, I am too. I, I think Jeff has mentioned that in the past. Instead of fiddling with the uh, occupancy load, just deal with the issue of variance for the items that are required for the design occupancy. Okay, well, I think there's a consensus among board members and that would be the direction we're headed. Um, and Mr. Chair, one quick note, if if it stays R2, then item five would be a question as requiring a variance uh, since R2 and it looks like this building has it's not a single exit building then item five may not be in play well that's what your memorandum said right it could be withdrawn oh yes oh, sorry <laughs> i forgot to put that in there. <laughs> correct um, all right mr blumenscheid uh again I, I i want everybody to be heard on this um your thoughts and comments on leaving this in R2 and applying whatever conditions that need to be imposed to get the building safe and to get, to get you the other variance. Um, well, you know, I work for the client and I just want to get them into the building and I want everyone to be comfortable with how the building is being used. So whatever means we get to getting to that end result, I'm comfortable with. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah, if the board is comfortable with these items and we'll be able to get the other item taken care of, I, I'm fine with that. Okay, well, I guess, we, I guess we're not totally there yet. I need to, uh, let's, have we heard enough uh, members of the board to, uh, uh, to move this forward at this time and, and or Paul, are there, are we at a point where you can craft some conditions uh, or do we still need to hear more on those items? Well, I, there's a, a couple things that uh, we that we do need to talk about. One, uh, items three and four have, have to do with uh, ratings of assemblies between the units. Um, just want to make sure that we have proper discussion that the fire alarm and 13D sprinkler system are enough to offset those. Just, I, I'm okay with that. Um, and I would want to see, make sure that Captain Mikowski is okay with that um, and the other board members as well too. Yeah, valid point. Captain? Yes, I'm okay with that. Jeff? Yes, sir, I'm okay with both items with the 13D system. And then the uh, other item, Mr. Chair, would be um, the accessible sleeping units uh, because is this is a split level and there is no lift or that is, would everybody be comfortable with waiving the requirements for accessible units or um, you know, there is, you know, an, an extra office space that could be a room that looks like it could be accessible um, if we did not want to waive that requirement. So that was probably the point of discussion amongst the board. Chip, Neil, Brad. You know, I think based on the the setup of this building in terms of communal bathrooms and whatnot, I, I, 
I'm not opposed to waiving the requirement on accessibility. Okay. I, I would be okay with that too. Brent? Which one is this accessibility? Is that item six? Uh, yes. I, I assume the first floor is accessible. Uh, no, it is not. It's a split first floor. level, so you have to go up or down from grade. Uh, so neither floors are okay. okay. Uh, well, I, there aren't a lot of units, so I guess I'd be okay with it. Okay. Uh, and then just, just for clarification, um, we would then be asking uh, the appellant to withdraw items number five and seven, and that's a question directed to Mr. Eaton. Yes, I'm okay with withdrawing those. Okay, so it's five and seven. Well, so, five has to do with the emergency escape openings, um, which I think Mr. Eaton had, had said um, is not a re requirement if it's still an R2. And, and fully suppressed throughout. Right. Um, seven. I mean, I'm, I'm okay if, if you think it needs to be in as a variance. I'm okay keeping it. I just want to make sure that we keep track of things correctly here. I would leave it in there only because of the 13D. I okay. don't think is considered fully suppressed. Okay, that's fine. For a heightened area of purposes. Um, but item seven could be withdrawn because we that is a, a condition of variance that Correct. would be withdrawn by the appellant. And then uh, I, I guess part of our motion would be then to uphold item one. On the classification. Yes. Mr. Blumenscheid, you understand? Yes. OK, all right. Comfort level there? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Paul, is that enough? If, if we made enough of a record, do you think? Uh, I I think so. Uh, I don't have any further questions. Obviously, if any of the uh, rest of the board has some questions. Um, they're free to ask that, but I, I don't have any other questions. I would need a moment to, uh, to, to put these conditions. Not too much, though. Uh, I, I guess, Mr. Chair, we would need a withdrawal of item seven by the appellant. And and either we uphold item one or they withdraw item number one as well. Too. Mr. Blumenscheid, uh, let's let's take item seven first. Uh, you comfortable withdrawing that from our consideration? Uh, just to, to clarify, we're withdrawing seven because we're putting in the fire alarm system. Is that correct? Yes. OK, then yes, that's fine. And then um, item one, if you were to withdraw it, the classification of the building uh, stands, but it's going to stand regardless, right? Correct. So either we uphold that item or it's withdrawn. Yeah. And then it's probably six one way, half dozen the other. You want to withdraw item one from our consideration or? in there in which case we're going to uh, we're going to uphold that item in the adjudicate the robotics adjudication order uh, i mean it, whichever is uh, like you said six one half dozen the other so we can withdraw it i think that's fine okay all right very well so items one and seven are withdrawn from our consideration um let's give mr began a few minutes here um off record uh and we'll come back on record uh, yes, this is Go ahead. Sorry, that was electronic snafu on my part. Oh, OK. All right, we're going to uh, Nick, we're going to go off record for just a few minutes. Paul, signal when you're ready. 
OK, All right. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Chair. Okay, Nick, back on the record, please. We are on record. Uh, variance is conditioned on the following, uh, and this is for items number two, three, four, five, and six of the adjudication order. Uh, number one, the use group for this building shall be residential R2, and the, and the occupant load shall be a maximum of 22 persons. Uh, number two, an alternate R13D fire suppression system shall be installed throughout the structure, including lobby, offices, toilet rooms, corridors, and dwelling units based on OBC 903.3.1.3 and NFBA 13. Number three, an alternate fire alarm system shall be installed and maintained, comprising of a remote enunciator at the front entrance. System smoke detectors with integral heat detectors throughout the entire structure, mm -hmm. audible slash visual devices throughout the entire structure, and pull stations at all identified means of egress. Number four, the alternate fire alarm system shall be required to be off-premise monitored in a manner approved pursuant to OBC 901.6. Number five, the alternate fire alarm system and off-premise monitoring shall be considered required systems and listed as such on the certificate of occupancy by the building official. Number six, the alternate fire alarm system and off-premise monitoring shall be maintained as required systems utilizing the Ohio Fire Code and adopted NFPA standards. Number seven, this variance is granted based on the use construction, occupant load, building area, and level of activity identified on the approved construction documents including the maintenance of all building systems and any conditions required herein. And number eight, the chief building official shall forward a copy of any certificate of occupancy to the fire department having either emergency response or fire prevention responsibility. 
Okay, uh, Mr. Munchad, I know you're uh, you're on phone, so you probably were not able to uh, read those uh, on the screen. Um, are any questions uh, on those proposed conditions? And if not, what is your comfort level? I have no questions. Um, for more clarification on the, you called it an alternative uh, fire alarm system. Is that like a standard NFPA 72 system? Is it some other kind of configuration? I just want clarification on that. Um, I think we put together the conditions of what's required for that as far as the locations uh, for and the types of devices as well as for pool stations and um, things like that. The reason why we call it an alternate fire alarm system um, is because uh, it's a system. Well, I don't know about that. I, maybe it, it is a required system. Um, but it is a requirement as a condition of variance, um, not necessarily as a condition of code. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, uh, Captain, thoughts, comments on those proposed conditions? I'd uh, just like to follow up with the, uh, the last question there. Um, I would still wanted to meet NFPA 72 on that, you know, on the requirements, understanding what the the locations and devices described out by Mr. Began. Yeah, I, mean, I think what we are, have noted in, um, you know, condition number um, six there, about the auto fire alarm system off premise monitors and the maintain as required systems utilizing the Ohio fire code and adopted NFPA standards. Okay. Thank you. All right. And uh, questions and or uh, uh, need for clarification or comfort level from you, Jeff? No, sir. We're good with those. And just to clarify the NFPA 72 standards. Long story short, the code says if you're going to install any type of fire alarm or portion thereof, it has to comply with 72's requirements. So um, the comfort level should be there that it's going to comply with the 72 standards. Okay, I think I think. Uh, uh, well, let me ask Neil and uh, Chip and Brad. Uh, those conditions satisfactory? Yes. Yes. All right. So I, I think we're at a point where we could entertain a motion, and I suppose the motion needs to uh, indicate that items one and seven have been withdrawn. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, for Board of Building Appeals case number 21 0015, uh, the appellant is Kyle Purvis for uh, Purvis Properties. Uh, at the uh, premises 500 East Center Street, Marion, Ohio, 43301. The appellee is Jeffrey Eaton, building official, Bureau of Building Code Compliance for the State of Ohio and adjudication order number 20202029 uh, dated uh, March 29th, 2021. Um, I move to uh, grant a variance for items. Someone needs to mute. Okay. Uh, grant a variance for items uh, two through six, um, subject to the conditions previously read in the record, um, noting the no objection of the building and fire officials, and also noting that items number one and seven have been withdrawn. Okay, that motion's been duly made. Is there a second, please? Second, Mr. Chair, Chip Welch. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Uh, Mr. Blumenscheid, the uh, variance is granted uh, on those conditions. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, do, uh, can we move on to the mentor case or do, do the board members or Nick need a break? Okay. Let's uh, uh, let's call the uh, next case. It was scheduled for nine o'clock. Apologize for running a few minutes late. 
Um, it is a mentor, the uh, uh, adjudication uh, jurisdiction. It's case number 21-0025. It deals with premises located at 9050 Tyler Boulevard, located in Mentor, uh, and Mentor's adjudication order number uh, is noted on the docket. Let's have an introduction of the parties. I, I do understand from Susan, at least earlier, we had everybody present. Um, beginning with um, the appellant, please state your full name and spell your last name, if you would, for the record in the capacity by which you're here in a representative way for the appellant. Uh, we'll do the same thing um, with the building uh, and fire officials, uh, or in this case, maybe just the building officials. Um, uh, and then we'll have an oath administered and we'll begin. Okay, I'll start. Uh, my name is Robert Powell. That's P-O-W-E-L-L. I'm the architect of record. And I also have my client here. I'll let him introduce himself. Good morning. My name is Harold Strassler. Last name is S-T-R-A-S-S-L-E-R. -S 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 I'm the director of corporate facilities for Sony's. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Good morning. Jim Decker, Chief Building Official, City of Mentor. Good morning. Good morning, Terry Scott, Mentor Fire Department. Uh, fire Inspector, last name S-C-O-T-T. -T. Okay, if uh, the four of you would stand, raise your right hand. Nick, would you administer the oath, please? <laughs> Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes. Thank you. Um, a record reflects the oath was administered, and and uh, uh, Mr. Powell, you can uh, you can begin. Thank you. Um, so uh, we'll just start off. This this building uh, has been vacant for about two years. I was involved with the previous client when we moved them out. Um, Sonny's is now um, wants to move into the facility. Um, it does comply with all the city zoning. It is a um, appropriate use for the area. Um, when the building was constructed approximately two, in 2001, um, about 20 years ago, so it's a relatively new building, um, it was built as an unlimited area F1, S1 uh, type uh, 2B construction. It does have a full open perimeter around it. Um, the new occupants after going through their what they're storing in there and their function some of their materials has pushed it outside of the limits of a typical f1 s1 um occupancy which has had us required us to move the building to an to a an h3 occupancy um when the building was built originally in 2000, it was only about 85,000 square feet. And about five years later, they built a 24,000 square foot addition to accommodate the height area limitations for the H3 requirement. We are putting in a uh, true firewall separating the two buildings. Um, because the building was built as an addition, there's only one place we can put an actual true independent collapsed firewall. And as such, that our our areas are limited in what we can what we can do. So as a result, our H3 occupancy is approximately 3,000 is approximately 4,000 square feet over the maximum allowable. Um, but that really can't be helped by us because we, we can really only put the wall in one location in this existing building. Again, um, we're also going to be completely uh, improving the fire suppression system to make it 100% um, to what the city would like and appropriate for the storage of materials that are there. Um, so that's item one. Item two is really it's part of the same thing, a height area. Because we've now had to separate the building, we no longer have a one building with full open perimeter we have to have two buildings with partial open perimeters so our remainder of the building which we are now going to classify as an h4 because of some of the corrosive materials that are in there it's minor minor but that because we don't have the open perimeter that's actually also now over by 
a little over 1,100 square feet. Um, to try to mitigate these issues on that side, we have um, decided to separate the office component from the remainder of the processing facility with a, a fire barrier wall, creating a separated mixed use for that half of the building. Uh, but even with that, we're still just a touch over the maximum allowable. Um, and we're also in bringing in an ESF, ESFR system throughout that entire half of the building as well. Um, so again, we ask that you um, look at this favorably. I believe that the city had also asked for a couple of other conditions, which we are agreeable to, which would be to separate the mechanical systems uh, from the, uh, the, the the warehouse and the factory so that they're not drawing in any of the air from that and that we'll be providing uh, fresh air from the outside uh, because currently those it actually draws from the factory. So that's something that we're going over and above to try to try to try to try to work with them and, and mitigate some of those things to try to make it as uh, approvable as possible concerning it's an existing building that's been again vacant for the last two last two years and we're trying to trying to reuse it and I again, do think it's an appropriate use in in the area that it is and and that's our story and I'm sticking with it gotcha. understood um, before we have questions of Mr. Powell since uh, you indicated that the, uh, the, the building department maybe fire was uh, in, in, in discussions on some other conditions. Mr. Decker, any thoughts or comments uh, at this point in time? Uh, yeah, this is so a good use for this building. It's an existing unlimited area building, an existing building. Now we're trying to throw some H3 and H4 uses into it. And the areas of, of increase uh, that are above the tabular values are not that significant and uh, they are proposing and to upgrade in the H4 area uh, to provide an, an ESFR sprinkler system and along with the separation of the existing office area up front um, from the rest of the building I think is reasonable and um, um, and I, yeah the these areas up front in the H4 that have a lunch room and they have offices along the side one's going to have a draft hood in it for the chemicals that they're um, mixing and testing and stuff like that. I would just want to make sure that that H4 air is not communicating into those offices and lunchroom. Um, and that's all. Thank okay. you. Uh, inspector, comments, thoughts at this point? No, I have. We're just in agreement with the building official and we're on board with this. Okay. Um, questions of Mr. Powell uh, or the CBO or the inspector by members of the board? Um, Mr. Chair, this is Paul Began. I, the question I would have is understanding a little bit um, what the business is, what it does, and what are the H3 and H4 components that are in this building, just so that we understand a little bit more other than knowing there's H3 and H4. I want to know what, what the business does and, and actually what, what, uh, what, what um, hazardous substances are going to be in there. I can answer that. So Sunny's is a, uh, they manufacture um, or process uh, chemical uh, soaps and other additives that are used in the car wash industry. So all of the materials that we have are, are, are water soluble. The, uh, the primary ingredient is actually water. <laughs> uh, so we have a very large water um, processing plant that we're building within the building. Um, but uh, the additives that go into the camp, into the soaps and so forth, some of them are um, uh, flammable and combustible. Uh, primarily, some of the uh, the dyes and the fragrances, and those are kept in the H4, excuse me, the H3 side because they're the raw materials. Um, and those are primarily, we have some class two flammable, but primarily. The bulk of it all is um, 3A and 3B combustibles, uh, but the, again, the limit did push us over the S occupancy, which was why it became an, an H3. Um, in the main processing side of the building, we have some low-grade uh, corrosives, which was why that pushed that into an H4. Other questions of members of the board? Hearing no questions, uh, thoughts Actually, or comments. Mr. Mr. Chair, just one quick question. Are these stored in like 
55 gallon drums or are they totes or? It's a combination of uh, primarily um, in the, uh, the finished materials are primarily uh, boxes and barrels. Uh, we do have some totes, but not a lot. Um, the, uh, the, the main building does have, um, we have a bulk tank area, which um, are, uh, will have a containment area within them. Okay. But those, we only have two, two chemicals that are in the, uh, the H4, excuse me, H3 area that are what we consider combustible enough to have in that area. Again, those are completely within uh, OSHA required tanks and a you know specific containment areas to contain the total volume if they were to ever spill so they don't go out throughout the building. Okay. Thank you. This is uh, Terry with Fire Department. One additional comment, there is existing uh, heat detection throughout the warehouse area currently also. Thank you. Thank you. Um, OK, the uh, sentiments of members of the board. I'm in favor of it. It seems like a practical good use of the reuse of the building. Uh, I, I would agree, uh, Mr. Chair. It's Paul Began. Thank you. Mr. Chair, this is Neil. I'm, I'm in favor of it. I think they did a nice job uh, coming to a compromise here. Yep. Brad. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in agreement, especially with the uh, agreement of the building official and the fire department. Thank you. OK, um, Paul, do you need some time? Uh, I do, Mr. Chair. Um, all right, um, let's uh, go off record, give Paul some time to continue to work while we slack. <laughs> Nick Ross. We're off record, yes. Is there a projected time when the Board of Building Appeals will start going back in person? Uh, that's a good question. I have to defer to Susan. Uh, we just, Mr. Eaton, Jeff Eaton, just he's not on any longer. He was on that first case. Mm -hmm. He would probably have firsthand information. My understanding is, though, that the state, my guess is that the state is slow walking that, um, but just not sure. Okay. That's correct. We do not have a date for in person. Tell you what, though, if you just you just in Columbus anyway, it's just just getting on the freeway. You just you see a lot more traffic. I mean, things seem to be opening up. Yeah. As a as a building official, would you prefer online or would you prefer to come to Columbus and oh, in uh, person <laughs> or back to Ashland at least? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm tired of the uh, the virtual meetings. I hope this went quick enough to get you back on schedule for the rest of your uh, docket for the day. No, yeah, we hope.
Okay, Mr. Chair. Okay, let's go back on the record, Nick. We are on record. Uh, this variance is conditioned upon the following. Number one, a two hour fire, uh, a two hour rated firewall shall be constructed between the H3 and H4 areas. Number two, a two hour fire barrier shall be constructed between the office area and the H4 area. Number three, the HVAC system in the office area shall be separated. Uh, separated completely from the H4 area to the satisfaction of the building official. Number four, all penetra penetrations through rated wall assemblies and opening protectives shall be designed and installed in accordance with Chapter 7 of the Ohio Building Code and maintained in accordance with the Ohio Fire Code. Number five, existing fire suppression system shall be upgraded to an early suppression fast response system, uh, PARIN ESFR and PARIN throughout the H4 area to the satisfaction of the building and fire officials. Number six, this variance is granted based on the use, construction, occupant load, building area, and level of activity identified on the approved construction documents, including the maintenance of all building systems and any conditions required herein. And number seven, the chief building official shall forward a copy of any certificate of occupancy to the fire department having either emergency <coughs> response or fire prevention responsibility. May I make a quick uh, comment or statement before we yeah, go? Yeah, please. We're gonna item, ask you. item two, the two hour fire barrier between the office and the H4 area. Um, uh, that's only required to be a uh, one hour required even in a new construction. Can we have that? Corrected to a one hour fire barrier. Uh, with, with the concurrence of the building and fire officials, sure. Yes, I'm fine with that. Jim Decker. Thank you. Inspector? Yes, I'm fine with that also, Tereska. Uh, so, uh, condition number two shall read a one hour fire barrier shall be constructed between the office area and the H4 area. Okay. Uh, are the balance of those conditions as proposed, Mr. Powell, satisfactory? Yes. And uh, Mr. Decker and Inspector Scott? Yes. Yes. Okay, I would entertain a motion. Oops, I just closed it. I uh, guess Mr. Chair for Board of Building Appeals case number 21-0025, the appellant is Orb Acquisition uh, LLC for the premises located at 9050 Tyler Boulevard, Mentor, Ohio 44060. The appellee is James uh, Decker, uh, building official for the City of Mentor Building Department and adjudication order number 2021-01. Uh, I move to grant the variance subject to the conditions previously read into the record and noting the no objection of the building and fire officials. Okay, that motion has been made. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chair, Chip Welch. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, okay, well, Mr. Powell, that uh, variance is granted uh, on those seven conditions. Uh, best of luck to you and your client. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank the board for their time. Thank you. Yep. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thanks, it. Guys. Yep. Thanks. Um, uh, Paul, you need a break? Um, I'm okay. Okay. Um, Nick, you fine? Uh, yes, I'm okay. Okay. Let's uh, call the next case. I understand the parties are present. Uh, it's a Miami County uh, Building uh, uh, Authority case. It's case number 21-0023. Uh, it, deals, it deals with a, a new truck storage building located in Tip City uh, and Miami County Building Department's adjudication uh, number is noted on our docket. Let's have an introduction of the parties uh, beginning with the appellant. Please state your full name, spell your last name and the capacity by which you're here uh, representing the appellant. We'll do the same thing um, uh, with the building and the fire officials. Uh, yes, Cale Jacobs. J-A-C-O-B-S, and I'm the project engineer. Thank you very much, Mr. Jacobs. Mr. Anglin. All right, that could be a problem. Uh, is our fire official 
Mr. Stockler present? Yes, my name is David Stockler. I'm the assistant chief for Tip City Fire Department. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Susan, any indication of Mr. England? It shows that he is here by phone. The 9374408121 should be Robert England. Okay. You just muted yourself, Mr. England. Hit star six on your phone. And that will unmute it. There you go. Can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, we're, okay. we're, just, we're just at the appearance stage. <laughs> Mr. England, state your full name, spell <laughs> your last name, uh, and, uh, uh, and your status with the building department, please. Sure, Rob England, E-N-G-L-A-N-D, Chief Building Official, Miami County, Ohio. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Jacobs, uh, uh, Chief Stockler, and Mr. England, if you'd stand, raise your right hand. Nick, would you administer the oath, please? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. That's the one I do. <laughs> I mean, we need to get three I do's. I do. I do. Okay, very good. I do. Let's better reflect that the oath's been administered. Um, Mr. Jacobs, you have the floor. Okay. Um, this is a, a, a continuance of the uh, hearing that we started on March 8th. And uh, we are proposing a uh, 9,990 square foot building uh, split between uh, S1 and B. Uh, it will have a 1,079 square foot mezzanine. And um, we are petitioning item number 3A, which is the sprinkler requirement. Uh, there will be, um, this, this company is a, uh, an excavation company particularly doing hydro excavating. Uh, this is a storage facility for their vehicles. There will be no main, uh, main uh, maintenance repairs, no mechanical maintenance, no engine replacements, anything of that nature. Uh, it's typically a storage area uh, for that. Mm -hmm. Questions of Mr. Jacobs by members of the board. Uh, Mr. England, what's the uh, building department's position? Okay, so I think last time we were talking about um, they didn't have access to water, although someone on the board pointed out that there was a hydrant a couple hundred feet down, roughly, uh, from where they were at. Um, so if they have water accessibility, obviously we'd want them to, uh, you know, be code compliant. If they do not, uh, their alternative that they submitted which would be a full uh, NFPA 72 fire system, um, as well as some extra heat detectors and smoke detectors. We are fine with that approach, as long as the fire department is okay with that. Uh, Chief? Yeah, so just to bring everybody kind of up to speed, I've done some research uh, here over the last couple of weeks. So the hydrants that are in question uh, run along Leitner Road, which is about 600 to 1,000 feet away from uh, where this building is proposed to be built. Those hydrants are city of Dayton for the airport. Dayton International Airport sits right near this property. Um, but basically, the city of Dayton sells water to the airport. So those hydrants would essentially be tapping into a private water supply. Now, <clears throat> with this and Lightning Road it splits the county line. Um, so getting water off of the airport, out of county, into where this is, sounds like it's going to be um, a challenge to say the least. So with that being said, uh, not knowing whether it's even possible to get into those hydrants. Uh, the fire department agrees with this as long as they have the, the uh, fire alarm, like Mr. England mentioned, as well as knowing that um, the change of the use would not change. So when I was talking to the owner, one thing I brought up was uh, this is a storage facility only. There's not going to be people regularly working in this building. 
uh, that'll basically be come in, pick the truck up, go out to the job site and bring it back. But as long as they don't change the use, particularly um, putting auto repair facilities in there, anything like that, then we support it. Um, Mr. Jacobs, do you have any information on uh, uh, on uh, or any anything to add to what the, the chief just mentioned? Well, we did do the last time you asked for an estimate to uh, extend the water line up there uh, and, and we did provide that to you in the uh, uh, information. Um, we have a, an approximate budget of 235,000 to extend the water line and to sprinkle the building. And um, I apologize. I tried to uh, get in contact with Mike Cross, who's the uh, regional um, planning engineer for the airport and um, apparently maybe on vacation. I tried last week. I tried again this morning before the uh, meeting and uh, he was not available. So uh, I do apologize about that. But um, like I say, we were trying to there in Montgomery County and we would need to come up across county lines uh, approximately 600 feet to get across our property. Okay, questions of uh, uh, Mr. England, uh, the, the chief and or Mr. Jacobs by members of the board. Uh, sentiments by members of the board. Go ahead, Paul. Um, I think I'm okay with it. We, I, I would have to make sure that uh, besides the fire alarm system is that we uh, make sure that we don't allow the maintenance of, of these vehicles. Now, I understand, um, correct me if I'm wrong, from the last hearing that, you know, there does need to be certain equipment that is attached or detached from the vehicles. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily consider that maintenance, but if we're trying to fix engines and, and do oil changes and, and other repair to the vehicles themselves, that would something that I would not want to promote. Mr. Jacobs, you want to you want to comment on that? Uh, sure, yeah, no, that, that's not their business. Uh, they, they don't do that. They don't do mechanical repairs. Um, they are primary contractors in Miller Pipeline and they are out on the job site. And uh, yes, they do. They do have a boom that they need to change a flexible uh, rubber bushing on uh, from time to time. And they, they provide things like that, but uh, no, I want to say um, engine repairs and and things of that, that nature uh, to be happening in this building. Do they store any fuel on site? Not that I'm aware of, no. I guess that's the only other thing I could think of, Paul, is a no indoor fuel storage. Neil? Yeah. What's actually involved in this uh, repairing of the boom and the um, rubber gasket or grommets, whatever you call it? I think you faded on us. Can you catch can you that? <laughs> What is the process to um, repair the boom and the nozzle that they do on a regular basis? Mr. Okay. Jake. Um, the boom sits down in, into the bucket and then they will they will pick it up and they'll swing it out uh, adjacent to the to the unit. OK, and then repair it um, and then swing it back. So they like to swing that out away from the walls of the building. But there's no like acetylene device used to. No, 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 no. It's a rubber. It's a rubber flange to, to go from the boom to the nozzle that they that they hold on to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no welding, no nothing. I think I'd be okay with it. Brad. Well, it seems like uh, in many ways a vehicle storage facility similar to what Department of Transportation has done in the past. There's no maintenance going on or no significant maintenance and uh, no fuel storage. So uh, and apparently water. Yeah, you know, we looked at that before and uh, it's down the road and I think they've answered that question. So uh, 
you know, I support the variance. Chip, did you comment? Oh, you did. You did. All right, you did. Yeah, I'm in favor of it. Respect a, few, uh, a no fuel storage. Uh, understood. Um, Paul, do you need some time? Um, we can stay on the record. I, let me just get this up on the screen here. These things are always so difficult. Well, you didn't have any problems first. No, I, I, I did. It just, I, I don't know. What, whatever Microsoft Teams doesn't like playing with uh, a, a, Adobe PDF readers. Well, of course, based on that phone call Chip took, he thinks he thinks we're on Zoom. He said you were going on a Zoom hearing. That's because everybody else in the free world uses Zoom over Teams. <laughs> and if there way, was a way to do this as a public hearing, I'm sure we would too. I know. Well, the Supreme Court, the, the Supreme Court hearings are Zoom. Yeah, every court system I know uses Zoom, but so be it. I'm sorry, this thing, okay. I can't, uh, as soon as I go to share it, it goes away, so. How many proposed conditions? Uh, there's eight of them. Try reading them. Darn it. I see him. Okay, I got it. Woo. Uh, the variance is conditioned on the following. Number one, an alternate fire alarm system shall be installed and maintained, comprising of a remote enunciator at the front entrance, system smoke detectors with integral heat detectors throughout the entire structure, audible slash visual devices throughout the entire structure, and pull stations at all identified means of egress. Uh, number two, the alternate fire alarm system shall be required to be off-premise monitored in a manner approved pursuant to OBC 901.6. Number three, the alternate fire alarm system and off-premise monitoring shall be considered required systems and listed as such on the certificate of occupancy by the building official. Number four, the alternate fire alarm system and off-premise monitoring shall be maintained as required systems utilizing the Ohio Fire Code and adopted NFPA standards. Number five, portable fire extinguishers shall be installed according to the provisions of OBC 906 and to the satisfaction of the fire official and shall be maintained as required by the Ohio Fire Code and adopted NFPA standards. Number six, vehicle maintenance and repair shall not be permitted within the structure at any time. No fuel shall be stored in the structure at any time. Number seven, this variance is granted based on the use, construction, occupant load, building area, and level of activity identified on the approved construction documents, including the maintenance of all building systems and any conditions required herein. And number eight, the chief building official shall forward a copy of any certificate of occupancy to the fire department having either emergency response or fire prevention responsibility. Mr. Jacobs, are you able to view those? Yes. 
yes, all but number all but number eight, but yes, we got them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Are those satisfactory? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Decker. I mean, uh, Ms. Stringland. I have no objections. OK, uh, and Chief. I'm good as well. OK, I'd entertain a motion. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, for Board of Building Appeals case number 21-0023, the appellant is A. M. Greer, LLC, uh, and Associated HydroVac uh, for the premises new truck storage building at 7911 Peters Road, Tip City, Ohio, 45371. The appellee is Robert England, building official for the Miami County uh, Department of Development, and adjudication order number 20203520. Uh, I move that the variance be granted subject to the conditions previously read into the record and noting the no objection of the building and fire officials. Okay, that motion has been duly made. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chair, Chip Welch. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, okay, uh, Mr. Jacobs, the variance is granted on those eight conditions. Uh, best of luck to you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Susan, um, you want to do a roll call for the last I will. case? I will. Um, let's see, could, for the individuals that have called in by phone, I have a number of 419-224-7586. Could you please identify yourself? I'm sorry, you're muted. Just hit star six. Chad. Still didn't hear you. Yeah. Sorry, Chad Stewart with the Institute for Orthopedic Surgery. Okay, thank you. And then I have a, um, Five one three two five four nine eight one five. Yes, uh, this is Steve Rivera, but I, I think uh, this is for the last uh, ten o'clock uh, one with the uh, Hillsboro. Oh, uh, Steve, you should have received um, a continuance letter oh, from your legal counsel, Mr. Barry or Mr. Herman. Huh, I did not. Okay, so it's been continued. It has. Okay. All right, thank you. You, have, you have the rest of the day off. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Um, that's all I have. Um, let's see oh. here. I do not see. Is Amy Harpster in attendance? I don't see that she is. I have emailed her, but I have not heard back. Do you want to give me a minute, and I will try to contact her by phone? Yeah, I think we probably would like her present if she's available. Um, do we have, well, do we have Mr. Ledger on the uh, on? And do we have Mr. Neeser and or uh, Ms. Colester? We do. Okay, and then we have Mr. Stewart. Okay, yep, yeah, um, let's go off the record for just a second, Susan. Okay, thank you. Okay. We're off. We are off the record. Um, if it's okay, I'm gonna step away for a couple minutes, use the restroom okay. real quick. That's fine. Thank you. Hi, this is Susan. Um, is this Amy? Yes. Oh, great, Amy. Okay, I was trying to get a hold of you by phone. Yes, we were listening in all morning. So, uh, sorry, thank you for reaching out to us. Um, 
Yeah, we're, we are here and present. Okay. Okay. If, if you have your computer on though, and you are watching as an yeah. attendee, Amy, you'll need to uh, mute the computer so we don't get pick up background noise. Okay. I did, Susan. We're good. Okay, great. Thank you. Is the fire official with you as well, Amy? No, he did not show up. Um, so other than that last resubmittal that we received, um, I have not heard back from him. Okay, I just, I didn't know if two of you were on a, one line. So I just this want is, to make sure. Yeah, this I have is, my this is, oh, Go ahead. This is Bill Ledger with Design Collaborative. We got an email from Chief Roberts this morning saying they had two structure fires over the weekend. He wasn't going to be able to join this morning because he was uh, doing inspections on those fires. Oh, okay. Um, well, real quick, let me uh, let me uh, let me poll the members of the board. Are we comfortable going forward in the in the uh, fire officials' absence? I think so. I mean, we could always ask for a letter of no objection or something you that fact. You submitted a letter on. Um, I think he submitted a letter that he is against it, didn't he? This he submitted us. I think as Mr. long as we have Ms. Hartzer on the phone, that, that I would be okay proceeding without the fire official. Okay. All right, we're going to call the case then, uh, Nick. Uh, let's go on the record. Um, this is our last active case to be heard by the board today. It's uh, a Lima, Allen County um, uh, Building Authority case. It's case number 21-0028. That uh, deals with the Institute of Orthopedic Surgery located in Lima uh, in Allen County uh, Building Authority's uh, adjudication number is noted on the docket. Let's begin with an introduction of the parties, beginning with Mr. Ledger for the appellant. Um, uh, and then each of you, please state your name. Give yourself just a second so that we can talk over each other. But uh, everyone who, who is here representing the appellant or appearing on behalf of the appellant, state your full name, spell your last name uh, in the capacity by which you are here. Uh, we'll do the same thing with Ms. Harpster uh, uh, at the, of the building, uh, the CBO. Thank you. Yes, uh, William Ledger. Uh, I'm the uh, project architect with Design Collaborative representing uh, the Institute of Orthopedic Surgery. Uh, last name is Ledger, L-E-D-G-E-R. Next. Good morning. This is Michael Nieser, N-I-E-Z-E-R. I'm the project manager with Design Collaborative representing the Institute for Orthopedic Surgery. Thank you. Mr. Stewart. Morning, Chad Stewart, S-T-E-W-A-R-T. -E I'm the administrator at the Institute for Orthopedic Surgery. And Ms. Collister. I think it's Amy Harpster. No, I'm just, I'm looking at my, do we have oh. a? Christina we, is not present. Oh, okay, she's not, okay. Very good. Okay, Ms. Harpster. Amy Harpster, Chief Building Official, Harpster, H-A-R-P-S-T-E-R. -E good morning. Okay, and you indicated uh, earlier you were with someone or you said we. Is there anybody appearing with you? The, it's my assistant administrator, building administrator. Uh, will he or she be testifying? No, I don't, I don't okay. believe there's any need okay. for him to testify. Okay, if uh, those that have appeared and just identified themselves, stand and raise your right hand. Nick, would you administer the oath? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Okay, very good. Mr. Ledger, uh, you or your colleagues have the floor. Great. Thank you very much, and thank you for your time this morning. Uh, so we have uh, uh, been working with the Institute for Orthopedic Surgery on the design uh, of an expansion to their hospital. Uh, the, the main components of the expansion are uh, to accommodate three new operating rooms in their existing operating suite in the existing building. 
Uh, so we were, uh, the addition then consists of uh, a new perioperative suite, which is the uh, pre and post patient care area for the surgery suite. And then uh, the second floor of the expansion is their new overnight care unit where they do have uh, inpatients that will stay for a night or two uh, post surgery. Uh, there are 24 new uh, patient care rooms on that second floor. Nine of those are actually uh, designated for um, 24 hour plus stays. The other uh, 15 are observation rooms, so the patients are only there for or less than 24 hours. The expansion uh, uh, project, of course, being a two story building, we have to go to at least a type uh, 2A construction type. And the expansion is connecting to the existing building, which has a primarily a type 2B uh, construction. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah type 2B right. construction type. And uh, there is a, a short section uh, where we are uh, connecting a, a Main Street corridor addition that's type 5A construction. Um, along that Main Street corridor, along the north side of, of the project there, are where their existing overnight care patient rooms are currently, and they, they have 12 uh, rooms there now. So uh, our main concern primarily is um, the construction of a required two hour firewall along those um, occupied patient rooms during construction. Obviously, we want the buildings to all be safe, uh, but, we're all, but we're also uh, concerned, the owner's concerned about how they would be able to conduct uh, patient care along those uh, existing patient rooms during the construction of an actual structurally independent firewall. So we have uh, proposed to separate the new construction type 2a construction from the existing buildings uh, with a two-hour fire barrier uh, in a subsequent meeting we had with fire chief roberts uh, last week um, his as you said his original um, concern was to not support it um, but once we explained the potential disruption to patient care and, and potential loss of business during construction. Uh, he was willing to accept the two hour fire barrier. Uh, primarily because we're we're just separating type 2A from type 2B, so we have non combustible construction on both sides of that barrier. But the one area he was concerned with with was we do have a, a short section that's uh, type 5A um that he wanted to protect further so we agreed during that meeting last week and that's what he put in his new letter of support was to have a three-hour fire barrier uh between our main street quarter addition and there's three existing patient rooms i don't know if you have the exhibit um that we sent in friday or not that if you go back to page four i think of that exhibit it shows it a little bit clearer uh what we were suggesting I look this looks like an older exhibit. Um, I don't know if we I mean you you are free to share your screen as you or Mr. Okay. Either free to share your screen as well too if there's something that you want us to see. Yeah I can do that. Hey, hey Paul it's it's in the email Susan sent it to us. The sport, yeah the under, yeah under revised documents I did not get the one this morning, so let me take a look. Is everyone able to see this exhibit? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so here's the uh, existing building is in the gray hatched area, darker area, and the new construction uh, two-story addition is shown in the lighter area. So you can see where we're, we've indicated where the existing construction types are. The 1996 original building um, has uh, type 5A construction. Just to the left of that, you see a blue line. That's an existing two-hour firewall that separates a 2005 addition 
which was constructed as type 2B. And then, of course, our addition to the left of that to the west is uh, we're pro proposing type 2A construction there. There is a, a main street corridor that runs along the north side of the existing building. And you can see the, um, we're, where we're suggesting a change from a two hour fire barrier to a three hour fire barrier. That's um, the main concern for Fire Chief Roberts was that um, we had a you know non combustible type 2A construction up against a type 5A construction along those uh, patient rooms there. So uh, we talked about uh, doing a, a three hour fire barrier along that portion. So that would extend from that existing two hour firewall to the east and then to the exterior of the building. Mr. Ledger, I'm, I'm looking at what Susan has sent us. OK, um, you're tell, I, all I have is the March 18th uh, letter from Chief Roberts uh, indicating that the fire department was not in favor. Did you say that that has been updated? Correct. I actually have that as well. I'm going to scroll it. Mr. Hartz, do you have that? Ms. Harpster? Yes, I do. OK. Yeah, all right, thank you. It is on the screen. OK, March 25th. All right. Yes. OK. Um, Questions of uh, Mr. Ledger at this point in time. I, I have a question. Uh, exactly uh, how many patient rooms are there versus how many patient rooms are affected by construction? So currently there are 12 uh, patient rooms in this existing building in the center here where I'm circling, if you can see that. Um, 11 of them, I believe, are along this north exterior wall, and then there are two that are uh, interior here. I'm sorry. So you, have a, you, have, you have a total of 12 patient rooms? Yeah, I'm sorry. There's 12. Did I say? So it's 10, <laughs> I think. I'm sorry. It's 10 along this north wall and then two here in the interior area. So all of the patient rooms are affected? Yes. Well, I'm sorry, there's one interior here that uh, would not be up against that uh, where we're proposing the fire barrier to be. What are, what are all the other rooms in this building? They're not patient rooms? No, most of this is a, you know, it's orthopedic surgery. So uh, this, the center area here mainly is where the operating rooms are and the existing uh, perioperative suite, the pre and post patient rooms are all here kind of in the middle. Um, there's a, a administrative area here um, towards the entrance and to the left of that is mo mainly uh, support services such as they have their central sterile on the south side here. Um, they have a, um, a uh, epidural clinic that's on the west end here as well uh, and some other support functions materials handling, that type of thing. OK, and so you can't construct a, a firewall, a separate wall next to the existing wall without uh, disrupting the use of those patient rooms? Without uh, disrupting patient care, you know, obviously patients are recovering from surgery in these patient rooms and you know, the construction of a fire wall <clears throat> up against those rooms is is of concern to the uh, to the hospital. Um, how is it going to be any different than a fire barrier? Can you tell us how you're going to make those existing walls into two hour barrier walls, please? Yes, we're proposing to use uh, shaft wall assembly, um, which would literally just be, you know, lining those exterior walls with a, a shaft wall assembly. Uh, full height from floor to deck above. Okay, but you're going to put a one hour uh, 